What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to add a column to our existing database with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add a new column to our database. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, so it is Flask Friday once again, the best day of the week. And in this video, we're going to add a column, add a field to our existing database. Now, this might sound pretty easy. We just add it, but it's not that easy. We got to do all kinds of other things first to set up a migration system and all that good stuff. So it's not hard. It's just going to take a few steps. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So you can see I've added this. We had name and email address. I just added a favorite color. Doesn't matter what we're adding, anything you want, but favorite color. And uh, you'll notice uh, some of these say none. Some of them have a color. And we'll talk about all of that in this video. So let's head over to our terminal and let's hit control C to break out of here. And you'll notice we're in our C Flasker directory, as always, our virtual environment is turned on. And that's important because we need to pip install something in order to take care of all this new database stuff. So usually when it comes to databases in anything, Flask, Django, Ruby on Rails, any sort of web framework, dealing with databases is always a two-step process. You create a migration and then you push the migration. So creating the migration is defining the data, defining the table, how many columns, what columns are, what are the names of the columns, what are they, strings, numbers, what are they? That's you make a migration. Once it's all sort of created, you then push that migration into the database. So it's always a two-step process and it's a little different with Flask, but it's basically the same thing. We need to make a migration and we need to push that migration into the database. And we don't have anything set up for dealing with migrations yet. I mean, not really. So we also want to keep track over time of those migrations so you can look back and see the changes you've made to your database over time in case you need to, you know, kind of go back to something that you were doing earlier if you messed up or whatever. So we need a system to take care of all this. So we're going to use something called Flask Migrate. It's an extension that sort of deals with all these things for SQL Alchemy, which is what we're using. And we're going to pip install it here. But first, before we do that, I want to head over to our code and sort of make the changes that we want to make in the code just to see what happens without using Flask Migrate or doing all the things. So let's head over to our hello.py file and we can come down here to our users model. And inside of here, anywhere, I'm just going to put it here. Let's add what we want to add. So we want a new column called favorite underscore color. And that's going to be the db.column. And this is going to be a db.string. And let's put it at 120 characters. Doesn't really matter. Now you'll remember these other fields, these other columns that we had, we put nullable equals false and unique equals true. Nullable means it can be blank or not. And here we're saying, hey, it can't be blank, right? The username and the email address, they have to put something. It can't be blank. But with color, we don't really care. So I'm going to leave that off. It can be blank if you want. You don't have to tell your your favorite color. So we'll leave that as just the way it is. So, okay, that's all there is there. Now let's come through here and look at our form. Here we have name and email address. So we're also going to need one for favorite underscore color. And that's going to be a string field. And in here we want it to say favorite color. And again, here we're having validators saying, hey, you have to put something here. We don't really care if they put the favorite color in or not, so we're not going to put a validator. So, okay, that looks good there. Now let's come down here into the update form. Anytime somebody fills out that form, we need to account for that. So I'm just going to copy this whole line and paste it in again. And instead of name to update email, it's going to be name to update favorite underscore color. And the request dot form is going to be favorite underscore color again. Okay, and then let's come through here and just kind of look and make sure there's no other places where we need to put that. And that looks fine there. Now, let's see, what else? The add user, to originally add the user, not to update it, to, to type it in the very first time, we're gonna have to make a change here. So let's come through here. And here we're defining name and email. We also need to define favorite underscore color, and that's going to equal form dot favorite underscore color dot data. And that's just the same format we're seeing here and here, right? So okay, that looks good there. And then down here, we have to go form dot 
favorite. Man, I should name this something else. I'm getting tired of typing in favorite color over and over again. Uh, form dot favorite underscore color dot data equals that. Okay, that looks good. Let's make sure nothing else is needed in any of these places. Okay, so that looks good. Let's see. Nothing here. Nope. Nothing here. Okay, so we're good there. Now, the last thing we need to do is come to our template file. And let's see, the update page will probably need to be updated. So remember, when we go to the update page, there's a form and it has each of the form fields. So we're going to have to add one of those. So, first off, right here on the page itself, where it lists the things, let's also put r underscore user dot favorite underscore color. Okay. Okay. And now when we want to update the user, we're going to have to add that form field to the page. So let's just grab one of these form. Uh, let's do the name. So label and field itself. And let's put it down right here. So this is going to be form dot favorite underscore color. Let me just copy this and get tired of typing this out. All right, so then here form dot name is going to be form dot favorite color. And the value is going to be named to update dot favorite color. All right, that looks good. So that's the update page. Go ahead and save that. But now the actual let's see user page itself. No, not that one. Uh, ba -ba -ba, the name page. No, the let's see add user page. All right, so when we want to add a user the very first time, we'll have to tinker with this page too. So again, down here where it lists the things, let's just list it on the screen. And this is going to be r underscore user dot favorite color. All right, that looks good there. And let's see, same thing for the form itself. We need to add a form field. So let's go, this is the email label, this is the name label. Let's copy all of this stuff. Let's just put it right here. Let's put a line break. So this is going to be form dot name dot label. So this is going to be form dot favorite underscore color dot label. Let me copy this again. And here's going to be form dot favorite color. That looks good there. Okay. Finally, the last place right down here, we want to output this to the screen one more time. So this is our underscore user dot favorite color. Okay, I think that's it. So we made a lot of little tweaks here. And I probably missed something, but hopefully I didn't. Let's look at this update page again. Uh, let's put a line break between these two guys. Save that. Okay, so let's head back over to our terminal. Let's go flask run. And let's see what happens when we try and load this page now. So we come back here, go to our main page, click add user. Uh oh, we get a big, horrible error. That's because we made a change to the database, but we haven't migrated. We haven't changed anything internally in the database. We just sort of tinkered with the code. So now is where we have to do all the migration stuff. So let's head back over to our terminal, control C to break out of here. And like I said, we're going to use something called flask migrate to take care of all of this stuff. It's an extension that sort of deals with all this stuff for SQL Alchemy. It will do all the stuff behind the scenes. We just have to sort of install it and turn it on. So Head over here, make sure you're in your C Flasker directory, make sure your virtual environment's turned on. This is important. We need to install this inside the virtual environment. So let's go pip install. And this is just flask dash migrate. And the F and the M are capitalized. So okay, that will run out, grab it, install it. Okay, that looks good. Now, before we set this up, we need to make a couple of quick changes to our main app. So head back over to our code again, go to our hello.py file. And at the top of the page here, we need to, let's see, let's put this right underneath our SQL al alchemy thing. We need to go from flask underscore migrate import migrate. And the M in migrate is capitalized. Let me just copy this, put that up there. Okay, so go ahead and save that. Now we also need to come down here to where our database is. And underneath this, we need to make a little declaration. We need to go migrate equals and then migrate. And then app, comma, db, right? So it's saying, hey, migrate our app with our database. Our app is this thing, right? So our, our original Flask instance. 
And the database is just this thing right here, right? So, okay, go ahead and save that. That's really the only two changes we need to make here as far as that goes. So let's head back over to our terminal one more time and we need to turn this thing on. So let's go flask db init. Okay, dun, 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 dun. And what this has done is created a new directory that holds all of our migration stuff. So if we head back over to our code and give this a quick look, you'll see now there's this migrations folder and it has this Alembic stuff. Uh, that's what Flask Migrate uses, Alembic. It's a, a daily thing that we don't really care about. It's gonna handle all these things. Versions, there's no version because we haven't made any new migrations yet, but all right, looking good. So far, so good. Let's head back over here and we need to make our initial migration. So let's go flask db and you could just hit flask db and now you have this flask db command and you can see some options and things if you wanna learn about this, you can check that out. But for now let's go flask db and what we wanna do is migrate and let's go dash m and then let's call this the initial migration. Okay, so that's created our initial migration. And if we come back over to our code and look in our migrations folder, we can click versions and now there's a migration in there. And you can see it's got a, a name and we're adding to our users table, the favorite color column, right? So it's figured out what we've made different. It's sort of made a migration for that. And now we can actually migrate. We can push that migration into the database. And to do that, we type in flask db, upgrade. So we're not migrating, we're upgrading, same thing. In any of your, in every other web framework like Django or Ruby on Rails or whatever, this would be migrate, but Flask calls it upgrade. So same thing. And okay, that looks like it worked. So let's go Flask run to run our server again and see if this worked. And moment of truth, see how bad we messed this up. Oh, seems to have worked. Favorite color is listed there. And you'll see all of these say none because originally when we added these records, we didn't have a favorite color. So there's nothing there to grab onto. So it's just generated none. So if we wanted to, we could go to John Elder, we could change this, let's say blue. If we submit, that looks like it worked. We come back, now it says blue, that looks good. Uh, let's go test Elder, <laughs> test at elder.com and test his favorite color is silver. Let's click submit. User added successfully, test elder is silver. If we come back here, yep, sure enough, silver, blue, none, 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 and we're good to go. So uh, it's sort of a lot of different steps here to add things. First, you have to go through your code and add the actual thing. You know, we added the favorite color column to our user database, our user table. Then we had to go through all the pages to like add these form fields and add the words here. But after we do that, it's just a matter of installing Flask Migrate and setting that up. Now, from now on, anytime you wanna make a migration, you'll just come back here, break out of here. You'll go Flask DB Migrate dash M, give it a little commit message, added something, hit enter. I'm not going to because we haven't added something. And then after you do that, that will make the migration. Then you push the migration by going Flask DB Upgrade. And I'm not gonna do that because we haven't made a, a change, but that's all there is to it. So pretty simple, not too bad, and uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codingme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. I'm doing over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codingme.com, and I'll see you in the next video.